So today, I want to teach you the easy way to become a hand reader. Now, on YouTube right now, my Smart Poker Study channel on YouTube, I have a full week of hand reading videos dropping. The video that dropped today, it's called Calling Three Bets with a Hand at the Top of Their Range is a Great Play. In this hand, or in this video, you can see me doing a hand reading exercise where I open raise with pocket jacks, and then I end up calling a three bet with those same pocket jacks. Now, here's the thing. In each of the videos this week, I go over the hand reading steps. Step one is assigning a pre-flop range of hands based on information and actions. Step two is to narrow that range through the streets based on further information and actions. And along the way, we're using poker's ultimate question, which is, what are they doing this with? This is the one question that helps you make reads on your opponent's actions so that you can exploit what they're up to right there. Now, I... In these five videos this week, I'm showing you the steps, and it is a little bit complicated. It requires the use of Flopzilla Pro and a hand from your database or full details, like hand details, from somebody giving you their hand like in a Discord server or Facebook uh, you know, group, something like that. And it is kind of a long and involved process, and if you really want to train yourself in poker's number one skill of hand reading, it might take a long time. My general recommendation for anybody learning hand reading is to do the steps uh, in order and do one hand reading exercise every day. If you've ever seen my YouTube series on uh, hand reading called 66 Days of Hand Reading, uh, a full video where I released a brand new video every single day, 66 days in a row, where I hand read a hand from my database right there. And it was, it's such a long process, training yourself day in, day out, doing a hand reading exercise. A lot of people just don't have that time and they don't really have the desire to work that hard. And let me tell you, those 66 days, I absolutely loved doing the, doing the work, but it was grueling doing it every single day. And it really took until like, it really took like 50 days, maybe 45 days, somewhere around there for me to uh, start to become really confident in the steps of hand reading and confident in the ranges I was assigning my opponents and how I was narrowing those through the streets. So it took a ton of work, right? It's a very long process to go through, but if you're willing to do it, yes, that is how you want to do it. One full hand reading exercise every day with a hand from your database and Flopzilla Pro. But I definitely want to talk about the easy way to learn hand reading. And there is such a simple way that, that most people are not doing, but it's something very small that you can incorporate into your studies and into your play. So first, the easiest way to learn hand reading when you're studying hands is you simply assign a range with every single hand that you review or that you see. Of course, you can use a program like Flopzilla Pro and full on assign a range, narrow it through the streets, like I show you in the YouTube videos, the hand reading videos, right? But the other thing that you could do is simply assign a range with Poker Stove, with Equilab, with uh, an iPhone app range builder, right? Anything at all. Every time you see a hand, whether it's out of your Poker Tracker 4 database, you're reviewing losing hands this week, you want to see the biggest winning hands, you want to work on that trouble spot of calling C-bets, whatever it is, when you review a hand, you assign your opponent a range. You basically ask yourself, what are they doing this with? And then figure out what hands can actually make these plays, right? If you're in a Discord server, like in the Poker Forge, um, we have a Discord server specifically for Poker Forge members. When somebody posts a hand, go through the hand, read the information that the person posts, whip out Flopzilla, whip out a free program like Equilab, and assign them a range based on what you think the opponent is actually making their play with. If you continually do this over and over again through your studies, you're going to naturally train yourself to think about your opponent's range with every hand that you review and every hand you play. Another place, when you watch a video. So in these hand reading videos on YouTube, you're going to see me assigning a range over and over again. But the range I assign them, that might not be the range that you actually think your opponents would play. Awesome. Pause the video, open up Flopzilla Pro, open up Equilab, and assign the range that you think, if this was your opponent on your table, what would they play this way? Well, build that range for yourself. Train yourself with every hand that you see. And that's going to really develop this as a very good habit for while you're playing as well. So that's the first thing in your studies. The next thing, in-game as you're playing. It's something that's going to take a long time to train yourself to develop a habit 
of thinking about ranges, asking yourself what they do this with. And that's the main question. Whenever you're playing poker and you open raise and your opponent calls, what are they doing this with? Think about that right now. Think about their range of hands that would actually call you. You open raise, they three bet. What are they doing this with? Start building a picture in your mind of the range that they're actually making this play against you. Now, asking this question over and over again, what are they doing this with? It forces you to think about their range and their tendencies. It's the most important thing that you can do. It doesn't matter when the action takes place, pre-flop or post-flop. Let me give you an example. You open raise in the MP, middle position, let's just say the hijack, right? And you have pocket tens when you open raise. The cutoff and the button both fold. The small blind pay player, who is a tight aggressive player, you might see their HUD stats on the screen, 12 slash 10, so they play few hands, but when they play, they're normally raising, hence tight and aggressive, right? That person just calls you the big blind folds before you see the flop, and actually before that big blind even folds, when the tight aggressive player and the small blind calls you, you gotta think to yourself, holy cow, what's he doing this with? He's tight aggressive, so he's probably three betting with his strongest hands. A, a, a player like this is probably calling with decent suited connectors, like something in the middle up to like king, queen, maybe even ace, king suited, something like that, but also pocket pairs for set mining, right? Remember, you have pocket tens. So you start to develop a picture in your mind. What are they doing this with? Um, calling you out of the small blind, a tight aggressive player. The big blind folds. The flop comes down 10, 8, 7. You flop top set on a mid card board. So maybe a little scary, right? Like you have great potential here. You flop the nuts, but there's so many things that could potentially crack your hand, right? He checks to you. Remember, 10, 8, 7. And you're visualizing, you're picturing his range right now. 10, 8, 7. You flop the uh, top set. He checks to you. You value C-bet on that board. Top set, you got a C-bet, right? You don't want him to, to see a free turn. Get some money in there while the getting's good. You bet, and then he check raises you two and a half X. And you think to yourself, whoa, crap, what if he already has a straight? But here's the thing, because that's the only thing that, that can beat you right now. I said you flop the nuts. No, you flop the top set. On the 10, 8, 7, Jack 9 has a straight or 6, 9 has a straight. But because you thought to yourself, what's he doing this with pre-flop? You know that a tight aggressive player in the small blind, they're not calling with Jack 9 suited. That's a quick fold. With six nine suited, super quick fold. So right now he check raises you. You have top set. Wow, what an easy spot to just re-raise and get it in. You're not worried about anything. You have the better hand than him. On that 10, 8, 7, what is he check raising you with? It could be 8, 7 for two pair. That makes sense. You're crushing that, obviously, right? It might be 9, 8 for a pair plus the open ender. Awesome, you're crushing that too. Plus, he has equity against you. You don't want to just call his check raise and let him set his own price to catch a straight on the turn, right? You want to re-raise him, make him pay to draw out on his hand. He might also have a set of eights or a set of sevens. Awesome. There's so many hands that you're ahead of that could be check raising you for value. It is go for value time at this point. Now, let's take the exact same situation, but instead of um, uh, uh, pocket tens, you have ace queen in the MP. You open raise, he calls in the small blind, flop comes down 10, eight, seven. He checks, you see bet bluff with your ace queen. He check raises you two and a half X. Whoa, things are a little bit different now, right? He's screaming at you that he has a value hand. You only have ace queen, you were just bluffing. You have two overs for six outs for a top pair on the turn. But his range is still basically the same. He's got the pocket sevens, the eights, the eight seven, the nine eight. All of those are ahead of you. He also has pocket tens. I've seen plenty of tight aggressive players call in the small blind with pocket tens, nines, maybe even pocket jacks because they're just a little scared. They don't want to see that ace or the king on the flop. They want to call when there's no ace or king, they're go for value. So he could even have that over pair of pocket jacks right here, right? What an easy spot now, because you thought logically, what are they doing this with? You took his player type into account, tight aggressive. You took his bad position, small blind, into account too. Those two things gave you a really good idea of his range, and then you automatically, as soon as he check raised, you realize that he's got you crust, easy to, easy to fold that ace queen 
in that moment right there. So that's the power of in-game asking and answering what are they doing this with. Now, those two things combined in the studies, assigning a range every time uh, you see a hand. When you're playing, asking what are they doing this with every single time that they make a play against you, both of those will lead to better reads and better decisions while you're playing. You're instinctively, intuitively becoming a hand reader with those two steps right there. So now, of course, with everything, I always want you to take action and practice what you learn from me. So basically, your action step is to do the two things, right? In your studies, every time you see a hand, open up Equilab, open up Flopzilla Pro, assign them a range. Ask, what are they doing this with? Every time you're playing, they make a play against you, ask, what are they doing this with? Make a read on their possible hand strength and then make some kind of a play that exploits that read, whether it's seabedding, raising, check raising, folding your hand when you know they got the nuts against you, right? Last up, if you actually want guided hand reading ex education, I developed my online poker hand reading workbook. You can get it through the link in the description down below or go to smartpokerstudy.com slash hand reading workbook. The steps that I gave you today, those will turn you into a hand reader, but if you want to do it quicker, the online poker hand reading workbook is what you need. 95 pages, 38 hand reading exercises and demonstrations. I actually have videos, 15 different video demonstrations with quizzes as well, and an answer key for you to check your work. So get that through the link in the description down below, or once again, smartpokerstudy.com slash hand reading workbook. And if you don't get the hand reading workbook, at a minimum, take action and work just intuitively in your current the current things that you're doing. You probably review some hands two or three times a week. Awesome. Every time, two or three times a week, you review hands, use Flopzilla Pro or Equilab, assign a range, and I guarantee you probably play your poker two, three, five times a week maybe. Whoops. Every night after work at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., you play poker. Ask that question over and over again. Those two things will become a habit if you take action with what you learned today. Before you watch another video, please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, take action both on and off the felt to become the player that you want to be.